I congratulate to the promised Savior, Imam al-Mahdi. May God hasten his advent and peace be upon him. On the blissful occasion of the birthday of Imam Hassan Mushtaba, the son of Imam Ali, peace be upon him all. I also send my congratulations to all believers around the world and I hope that Almighty God, by His grace and mercy, expedites the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi so that all believers and humanity be relieved of their numerous problems. The Prophet of Islam gave Abu Dhar some pieces of advice which are not exclusive to Abu Dhar. These advices are addressed to everyone. Anyone who seeks the prosperity of this world and the hereafter, they should try to adhere to these advices. Initially, I recommend everyone to study these advices by the Holy Prophet of Islam, especially the dear youths and respected ladies, and especially during this holy month of Ramadan. If you make a firm decision in this month, you can guarantee the prosperity of the world and the hereafter for a whole year. These advices by the Holy Prophet of Islam are very instructive and educational. The elderly should also study these advices. It is a pity to miss your chances in the holy month of Ramadan. 
These advices are roadmaps to prosperity of the world and the hereafter. For example, the Holy Prophet of Islam said in this advice, O Abadar, be a stinger with your lifetime more than with your money. In this hadith, the Prophet of Islam says, just the same way that people do not usually waste their money, they should also be stingy with their lifetimes as well. Be stingier with your lifetimes more than with your dinar and dirham. Dirham and dinar were the usual currency of the time. Gold coins were called dinar and silver coins were called dirham. One dinar equals three grams of pure gold, 24 karat gold. The gold that is used in modern coins, since pure gold and silver are very soft, they are alloyed with a percentage of copper. So we have 22 carat gold, meaning that 2 carats are copper. Copper is added to make gold coins and jewelry hard. In old times, gold and silver were used as currencies, and therefore, they were not alloyed with copper. So if people wanted to buy something which was cheaper than one coin, they broke a piece of the coin and paid for it. For buying houses, gardens and lands, people had to pay several coins. But for buying food and bread, they had to break their coins. This is why they used pure gold, 24 karat gold. Dirham and Dina were the currencies of the time. Each gold coin or dinar weighed three grams of gold. The first Islamic coins were issued during the time of Imam Ali, peace be upon him. Before then, it was the pagan's coin. According to a hadith by Imam Baghir, peace be upon him, the first Islamic coins were issued during the tenure of Imam Ali as Caliph. Each dirham or silver coin weighed a little more than two grams of silver. Each 
تو ذهن خود نقره خالص بوده و شش دهم یک نخود All transactions were conducted through these two currencies. It is never wise for people to pay three dinars for a product that is worth less. It is also not wise to sell a product cheaper than its true value. We usually don't sell cheap and don't buy expensive. Since money is used to do all kinds of transactions, all people are very sensitive about the value of their money. So no one wanted to sell their things cheap or buy things expensive. In this advice, the Holy Prophet of Islam made a very important point. And it can guarantee your prosperity if you stick with it. The Prophet said that every moment of your lives that goes on, he said that we should care for these moments more than money. We are careful about spending our money. And so, we should be careful about our lifetimes as well. Days and nights, hours, Weeks and months and years pass. But what do we get in return? We should not sell our lifetimes for cheap for a cheap price. Oh Abu Dar, be stingier with your lifetime more than with your dinar and dirham. We are very careful not to squander our money. If you want to sell a house or a rug or anything else, you are not you are very careful not to sell them for a cheap price when you want to buy some stuffs you try not to pay too much for it the prophet said be a stranger with your lifetimes more than with your money the Prophet employs a very nice word in this hadith. He employs the word istinji, which is a bad quality. The Quran says, whoever is saved from istinjiness. Being a stingy is not good at all. But the Prophet uses this word and wants us to be a stinger with our lifetimes than with our money.
It is a good quality to be stingy with your lifetimes. It is a bad quality to be stingy with properties. For example, you should sell things cheaper to needy people, and if you are buying from a needy person, it is okay to pay more. The Prophet uses the word stingy to highlight the value of one's lifetime. The Prophet of Islam is the best of all creation and he had no love and tendency for this world whatsoever. And so the Prophet uses this word in stingy. One's lifetime is so valuable that the Prophet wants us to be stingy with it. Be stingier with your lifetime than with your money. How are we going to spend our lives? What is the best way? All people let go of their lives, boys and girls, men and women. I particularly speak about the youth and your ladies. They have the future, both in this world and in the hereafter. They should compete with others to be more successful. Two things are very important. It is fitting for one to repeat them every day and excel on them. People repeat eating every day, the whole month and the whole year. Because this is what our bodies need. Our souls also have the same need. Human souls are attacked by two powerful forces. One of them is Satan, and next it is the compulsive soul. The most vicious enemy of yours is the soul within you, as the narrations say. Healthy people eat every day because their bodies need to be fed every day. Our souls also need to be admonished every moment too. People need to say prayers every day because our souls need it. Two forces, Satan from the outside and the compulsive soul from inside, they attack all of us. We all have a compulsive soul that entices us to do evil things, entices us to do injustice, to be stingy, to be arrogant, to be jealous. The compulsive soul, as the Quran says, commands us to do evil things. And Satan from the outside is also pushing. There is a tradition that says the thieves cannot enter a house if the door is locked. But if the door is unlocked, you are to be blamed for being robbed. Satan is a thief. And if you lock the gate to your heart, Satan cannot enter it. The traditions say, lock the door, because 
Satan cannot open a door. We should lock the door to our hearts and Satan does not have a key to open it. So if we close the door of our hearts and souls, Satan cannot enter it. The body needs to be fed regularly and so the soul needs to be admonished regularly too. These advices given to Abu Dhar by the Holy Prophet of Islam if you reflect upon these advices every day, they will affect us more. I recommend you, all dear men and women, especially the youths, to study these advices by the Holy Prophet of Islam at least once. You can ask for help from scholars if you did not comprehend parts of it, and then you can make a firm decision to implement them. What do we spend our lives for? We should not be obsessed with what we eat. We should not be enslaved by the idea to eat this or that food or we get mad. The thing that matters is that after we eat, how do we spend our time during the holy month of Ramadan? We could pray, read Ziyara, reunite with our relatives, do good to parents. They all are good things to do. But they all stand in varying degrees. No one would sell a house worth 1,000 dinars for any less than that. No one would buy a house worth 1,000 dinars for anything more than that. The Prophet said, be stingier with your lifetime than with your money. We should sell it for a higher price. Two things are very important, even if it is said for a thousand times. A weak person desperately needs nutrients. These things nourish the soul, the heart and mind. Two things. The first one is to keep excelling on good things. Let's try to excel on good morals. Let's try to excel on piety day by day. The Holy Prophet said to Imam Ali, peace be upon him, the most virtuous deed in the holy month of Ramadan is to avoid sins. 
Each year, the Holy Prophet of Islam used to deliver sermons before the Holy Month of Ramadan. This famous sermon is quoted by the Holy Imam Ali, peace be upon him. In this sermon, the Prophet makes 10 or 15 recommendations. They are meeting with relatives, reciting Quran, being good to parents, etc. When the Prophet was finished, Imam Ali asked, What is the most virtuous deed in the holy month of Ramadan? The Prophet did not mention any of those 15 recommendations. He said the most virtuous deed is to avoid sins. We should decide not to abandon any of our obligations during the holy month of Ramadan. We should decide not to commit any sins. Daily prayers and fasting are not the only religious obligations. There are many, many other obligations. What about sins? It is a sin to cut ties with relatives or be mean to parents. It is a sin for parents to be mis to misbehave their children. It includes all our interactions with people that we meet. It is a sin to lie or cast accusations. In the holy month of Ramadan, we should make a decision not to abandon the obligatory deeds. And if we surrender to the compulsive soul and Satan and we committed a sin, the Holy Quran instructs us to beseech God and ask for forgiveness. This is the most virtuous thing to do in the holy month of Ramadan. It is very rewarding to distribute food in holy Ramadan. If you cannot afford it, the Prophet said, you can give a date fruit to people. If a person is poor, they can give a glass of water to other people. These are virtuous deeds. But the most virtuous deed is to avoid committing a single sin in the holy month of Ramadan. And we should ask forgiveness if we committed a sin. Now, if a person is not pious, we cannot just learn from them. Everyone should answer for their own deeds in the afterlife. A wife can guide her husband if he is going astray. A husband can guide his wife if she is going astray through good morals and nice words. If it did not work out well, you have done your job. And if it worked, you will be rewarded greatly. The Holy Prophet of Islam had many companions. Not all of them were good people. There is a whole chapter about hypocrites in Holy Quran. Hypocrites were the Prophet's companions. They were the idolaters who had converted to Islam, but they did not obey the Holy Prophet of Islam and created problems for His Holiness. The Prophet kept admonishing them, but the hypocrites ignored him. 
Yet the believers obeyed the Prophet, and thus the Prophet was greatly rewarded. For every person who prays until the end of times, the Prophet is also rewarded. It is all due to the Prophet, even though it was God's favor to the Holy Prophet of Islam. Whatever good thing you cause, you will be rewarded for it as long as it lasts. Is it not a pity to miss out on this chance? These nights and moments are very important. It's all about purification of the soul. The Holy Quran also says this. The only way to salvation is self-purification. How can one purify his soul? It requires two things, a firm decision and persistence. We should decide to purify our soul day by day and excel on goodness. Salespeople work around the clock to make money and lead a decent life. In this case, making money is an act of worship as the Hadith suggests. They can also pay charity and also pay homes, zakat and other things. It is not obligatory for human beings to make more money and pay more money on charity, but it is obligatory for one to decide and persist on avoiding sins. And to excel on piety and good morals, it is an obligatory duty. Another obligatory thing to do, which is a very important collective duty, especially for the dear use, it is guiding other people. Your siblings, spouses, your aunts and uncles, parents, neighbors, colleagues, you should try to guide them. You excel on good things and you should help others to do the same. It is obligatory to teach others about their obligatory duties. For example, if a neighbor is committing a sin, it is obligatory to admonish them. It doesn't matter if they listen to you or not. You should guide your siblings, parents, relatives and friends. You should not mind if they listen to you or not. You're just doing your own job and if they did not listen to you, you would not be held responsible in the afterlife. And if they listen to you, it is worth talking to them for 100 times, since you will be rewarded for their deeds. You shouldn't deprive yourself of this. This is good to do all year long, but the month of Ramadan is the best time to do it. 
You are rewarded for reading the whole Quran in all months of the year. But if you do it during the holy month of Ramadan, you will be rewarded multifold. It is a marketplace for the afterlife. Is it not a pity to miss out on this chance? Guiding others is even more rewarding. If you try to guide people during the holy month of Ramadan, you will be rewarded multifold in comparison to the rest of the year. Everything you do in Ramadan is rewarded multifold. It is a season of all virtues. The self-purification is very important. You can always be better. You need to persist and make a firm decision. It is not easy, but it is doable if you make up your mind. There are people who are lazy in worldly affairs. They have to beg for things. Some beggars could do better, but they did not. And that's not good. You should not be lazy about these virtues. Self-purification begins with your belief system. The dear youths can sit together and discuss their beliefs. See for yourselves how much you believe in Almighty God. Imagine you're not aware that there is a hidden camera in your room. You might do inappropriate things, but as soon as you know about the camera, you will act differently. God is omnipresent and all-knowing. It is inappropriate to use camera analogy for God. God is very merciful. A camera reveals all good and bad things. God is so good that if you commit hundreds of sins, God wipes them out if you repent. If a person commits a sin, due to his compulsive soul and Satan, in case it was not a transgression against others, when he repents, God makes the angels who record these deeds to forget about them. Angels do not forget things. They are not human beings. But God makes them forget. If a person truly repents and regrets his sins and decides not to repeat them, God will make angels forget about those sins. Angels do not forget things. But that's what God does. How deeply do you believe in God? Let's think about it.
This is the root of our faith, Islam, and our beliefs. God is just, and God does not do injustice to the weight of an atom. Injustice is done out of evil nature or need. People rob banks because they need money. But God is not needy. God does not do injustice. How much do you believe that God is just? We should persist to believe in God's justice. How much do we believe in prophethood and emimate? What about Tawalla and Tabarra? Associating with God's friends and dissociating from the enemies of the Holy Ahlubay. We cannot take one and leave the another. They are all connected to each other. They are the principles of our faith. They are the rules, not practices. How much do we believe in the Judgment Day? We all will have to stand in a court someday. And we do not know whether we will be condemned or exonerated in this court. Should we really be living casually? At some point, we will stand in this court. Let's think about this and believe in this. Let's do something about it and prepare for that court. The more one believes in God and the Judgment Day, the more successful they will be. The holy month of Ramadan is the best time to make this happen. O Abu Dhar, be a stinger with your life than with your dinar and dirham. Let's decide to study the advices by the Holy Prophet of Islam in the remaining days of the holy month of Ramadan. Let's reflect on them and implement them. First, it is self-purification and it is never enough. There is always room for improvement. And next, it is guiding others. I hope that God gives this honor to everyone. May God bless Muhammad and his pure household.